All right, good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, the 10th day of July, 2013. Um, let's see, looking around, the ES is heading up into a weekly trading zone. The Russell is inside a weekly trading zone. Um, this is gold right here. Okay, gold just had a very nice trade right off the BBC. Now, we'll try to snag another another leg of this gold trade here if we can. There's the trend line. Um, now watch for the divergence here between the brown line and the green line. And look for the color change without a transition bar like we just had right here. You guys remember I, s I pointed that out um, in a partner's meeting. Now right here what we have going is is a really nice channel. like that. Alright. It's a very nice channel that we have going. And so we have a nice trend to go with it. Alright, I'm sliding crude oil over here for the moment. Um, and we'll see, we're testing the BBC here right now um, on the gold. We're testing the BBC and we have a high of 54.6. That's a we need a close because we have blue on the cycle. We need a down close. That's it right there, 53.8. Okay. Um, I took 53.7. Okay, I'm short at 53.7 and stop at break even. Okay. 53.7 stops already at break even. All right, I'm flat at break even on that. didn't have the uh, single bar color change. Well, we did actually have the single bar color change with no transition bar. So this should actually move down. You should see the green line getting all the way down into the cycle right here. That's what we should see right here, is the green line getting all the way down into the cycle. Um, let me point that out for you again. Okay. Right here, we had an orange bar that went to a black bar with no transition bar. Okay, we had a little bit of divergence here between the green line and the maroon line. And the maroon line was going in the right direction. Okay. Those of you guys who used to read Frank's notes, I don't know if you still do. No, well, actually you don't because I don't send them out because Frank hasn't been typing them for a while. Um, when you have that kind of divergence, you see it just happened over here also. Right here. And you have... bar change from black to green with no transition bar. That works out really, really well. Okay. In any trade that you're getting into, if you if you look down here at the um, at the maroon line and the maroon line is going in favor of the trade, that seems to have a better uh, a better possibility of success. Okay, it's just one more one more thing to pay attention to if you want to. I mean you don't have to. You know the things work well without that, but that's just one of the one additional thing you can look at there. Okay. Um let's see right in here. We had transition bar. I mean no transition bar from black to orange. Right there. And we had the bullish divergence between the green line and everything. Okay. And we had the same thing over here. Alright. Um, Alright. Alright. Now, let's, uh, let's just going to move the crude oil over right now. We have crude inventories coming out today at um, at 10.30. We have crude inventories coming out. The Russell's going up into the zone. The ES is going up. 
the essence going up into the zone. And copper is not doing anything right at the moment. Um, natural gas isn't doing anything. The euro is also not doing anything right at the moment. And soybeans don't open for another hour, so there's no sense even really looking at the beans. Uh, yeah, we also have Bernanke. We have Bernanke today, and we have, uh, what is it, the meeting minutes or something like that, I think, today. Copy the link down, Jeanette. The link that you used to get in here this morning, just copy it down. Because it's going to be the same tomorrow. All right. Um, on the crude right here, this is our trend line. We have black bars. I don't like the black bars. A um, little bit of divergence down here. So when I'll close over here on the crude, would be a long trade. Uh, 105.42 was the low, 105.46 would be the high, 105.46 would be the high, okay. Um, on the on the gold, we didn't put in a lower swing, and this is important, okay. We didn't put in a lower swing on that last move down, so we're not going to try to grab this. If we don't put in a lower swing on this move down, if we don't get down below that level, this is bottoming action right here. Um, it, not so much the wicks. The wicks don't make it top. The the lack of follow through with um with the slingshot moving is what is what causes the topping. Okay, forty six right there is the long trade. Okay, forty six is a long trade. Now crude is going right into the eye of the day. It's at the eye of the day right there. That is the eye of the day. Oops. Hang on. There. There. Okay. Uh, crude stop at break even. Okay, closed on the other side of the MA1, and I. I was in at 46, and I'm now out at 46. All right, I'm going to slide that off to the side right now. Um, Yeah, I don't, I don't let the high of the day concern me so much. That's actually a, um, the way that I look at it is it's an area of resistance that if broken, you know, can really open the door to some much higher prices. Okay. If it doesn't get broken, obviously it's going to turn us down. But um, on the natural gas, we are G, G, C. Q. We're on Q on the natural gas P. Okay, there's no sense in having the um, the soybean chart up right now. All right, you see over here on the gold, we did get down below that section right there as the green line got through the cycle. Okay, so we can trade in that direction again now. There's nothing here on the copper. 
At least not yet. There's nothing on the copper. Um, the euro, though the euro's not moving right now, um, it has a potential shorting opportunity right there. The ES, I'm not the ES, the, uh, the crude, the crude did not put in a higher swing yet. Okay, over here on the gold, we're testing the BBC. We continued the trend. We have some bearish divergence now. Note that the green line and the brown line are, uh, they're sliding together right here. Typically, when that happens, price is going to move in that direction. Okay, you're going to get a move in that direction. I mean, the move right now so far was this move up from the bottom. Okay, we need a trend line over here. And a down close. Um, Paul, I've done them every day this week so far. My plan is to do them every day for a month and see how um, see how it goes. You know, the idea is to um, is to go through these and um, and do a recap in here at the same time. By the way, I haven't done the recap yet. Let me do that right now. Um, actually, I, I did yesterday's recap in the room, so I'm just going to do a couple more, a uh, couple more live trades in here, and we'll see how it goes. Now we missed a few trades. We missed that trade. We took this trade, but we took didn't we get a break even on this trade on the gold? We're at break even, right? Yeah. Um, I put the arrow in the wrong place on this one. We get out right over there at break even. All right, now we've hit the BBC here. We're running out of divergence, and the cycle's hitting straight up, so we're not going to take a trade right there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I wanted... All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Good morning, everyone. Today is the 10th day of July, 2013. It's Wednesday, the 10th day of July, 2013. I'm going to quickly go through the trades that we took yesterday. And we took a couple of trades so far this morning. Um, we have a couple of break-even trades so far this morning. But <clears throat> we missed some nice trades right at the open. We missed one right there and right there. And we took this one and we ended up with a break-even on that. We missed this one over here on the gold. And we took this one and ended up with a break-even on that. Um, we ran out of divergence right here, so there's no trade right here on the gold. All right, we need to see it work its way down, but the cycle's going to reset now. Um, I wanted to go through the trades that we took yesterday. Yesterday we took um, trades in soybeans. Let's start with the soybeans trades. All right, this is the recap for July 9th. Okay, I want to do a quick recap recording for July 9th. Um, let's see. Oh, that's the NQ. We didn't trade anything on the NQ. Um, Let's do a quick recap recording for July 9th. Here it is. Um, yesterday on the soybeans, <coughs> we pointed out a hidden shoulders pattern in here. And we're looking for the down close below this level right here. Okay. We're looking for the down close be below that level right there. And when it got that, we said it was going to get down to here. Um, just a second. There's a short trade right here on crude oil. Crude oil's got a short at... 105.39, 105.39 currently, 105.39. Um, <clears throat> the down close below this trend line right here is what we're looking for. We um, Actually, I took this trade by accident because we didn't have any divergence. We were looking for that. We did get that. We entered on that, but then I realized we didn't have divergence, so I got out of the thing. Then I missed the next one right here. All right, This was a perfect opportunity right here that I missed yesterday. A bunch of the guys in the... In the um, in the live trading room got that trade and I was happy to see that you got that trade but I did not um, 
that made a nice move down. The next one was right over here on a pullback right here. We had a close down below the trend line. And it moved down, but it never put in a lower swing. It was bottoming action in here. We got a couple ticks profit on that. Those were soybeans yesterday. Now, soybeans today, well, we don't. Um, <coughs> they're not open yet, so we don't have any trades here on the beans. Um, let's look at the next thing was the Russell yesterday. Okay, we took some trades on the Russell yesterday, and let's just go through them. Here we go. This was in the live trading room. Our first trade of the day was right here on the Russell in the live trading room yesterday at 9.30, um, after 9.30 anyway. We had a short right here. We had a short right down into the zone. All right, we went short there. We took 10 ticks profit on that trade. The next trade was over here, down close below the trend line, below the weekly trading zone. I don't remember how many ticks profit we took on that trade, but we took some profit on that one. Um, the next two trades were over here. We had a break even on this one, and we took some profit on this. We missed this trade, and then, you know, we missed this trade in here. I think that was pretty much it with the Russell. Okay, there was a lot more opportunity, but we just we missed it. Um, it was outside the the window of the live trading room anyway. Okay. Um, let's see on crude oil. Let's go. Let's go to yesterday on the crude. Okay, that was pre-market. Um, we said there was topping action right here, and there was topping action right there. We got short over here. We took some profit. Um, on the crude yesterday, we were up 12 ticks, so I think we took 10 ticks profit on this one, something like that. Um, and the next one, we missed a trade here, we missed a trade here, and we missed a very nice trade right there. We also missed a trade right in here. Um, we took a short right here. I think we took a little bit of profit on that, but I'm not sure about that. Um, we then missed another long trade right in here on crude oil yesterday. And another one right... No, there was no divergence there. I'm sorry, we didn't miss one here. There was no divergence. That's why I don't have it highlighted. All right, and that was the end of the morning session yesterday. So those were the crude trades. Okay, those were the crude trades yesterday. Um, let's go all the way back to the end right here. Um, currently, there's a crude trade right now. The down close right here with the bearish divergence was a crude trade. Okay, right in there. And we missed a couple of crude trades this morning right at the right at the 8:30 start right here. We missed this one and this one, and we took this one and we got a break even on that. Okay, that's where that's where it stood right there. Um, currently, if you get a down close below the MA1, that would be a spot to uh, to take your risk off the trade. Okay, on the current trade, it's consolidating right now, going sideways a little bit. Um, if we break out of this consolidation box right here, whichever way we break out of this consolidation box, I would think that price is going to move fairly quickly. All right, whatever way we break out of the box. Now, it's moving down below the MA1 right here. All right, we anticipate that the green line is going to get down into the cycle. The green line is going to move down into the cycle is what we anticipate. So we look for the... Um, for the price to get down below this level right here as it gets down into the cycle. That's what you anticipate. But we don't know what direction it's going to go in just yet. It's consolidating. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I did soybeans, Russell, gold, and crude. All right. That was the recap of yesterday. Okay. That was yesterday's recap. Um, Pete says yesterday's soybeans traded uh, two to three times the the average volume. Um, and Jerry said, start trading at 7.30. I noticed very little continuation. Would I say 8.30 is a better time? I would say 8.30 is a better time um, because oftentimes there's news at 8.30 and that will trigger a bunch of things. I don't know if we had any news today, Jerry. Um, let me go and look. Uh, today we have a whole bunch of news. Actually, there's... At 10 o'clock, there's wholesale inventories. Um, at 10.30, there's crude. At 1, there's a 10-year bond auction. At 2, there's um, FOMC minutes. At 4.10, Bernanke's going to be speaking. So we'll be, you know, we'll be completely done by the time all that stuff happens. 
Um, there's really no news events today to speak of. The crude, the crude inventories is the big one today. That's what's going to move the markets that we trade. Um, all right. Um, watch the copper over here, guys. We had a bearish cross pull away. There's some divergence here between these two. Wait to see if this uh, brown. Yeah, you see that there's some divergence between them as well. Okay. Soybeans. Let's look at the big picture on the soybeans. Okay. Um, they started to move down. Hang on a sec. I got to show you guys something in just a minute. Um, the soybeans started to move down this morning, then started to consolidate. This was last night, and they started to consolidate. Um, they're not trading at all right now. There's no movement at all on the soybeans. Um, I don't even see anything happening with my DOM. So we'll look for them to actually break out of this consolidation area that they're in. And they're in a huge consolidation area right here. Okay. Um, now, remember a few minutes ago I said whichever way it breaks out of this box, it should move pretty quickly. The crude oil did break out of the box and it did move pretty quickly. Um, the fact that the green line got down into the into the cycle like this. The fact that the green line got into the cycle like that without it putting in a lower swing makes this bottoming action right here. Okay, this is bottoming action right here. So we should see it move up and give us a higher swing and everything. We don't have any divergence to speak of, so there's no way we could trade that right there. Um, let's see. Gold. Um, let me slide the gold over so you can take a look at that one. I may just leave the gold up until the soybeans open up. Okay. Um, gold has bullish divergence in a blue cycle and is testing the BBC. It's got a long trade right there at 53.5. Okay, 53.5 right there on the gold is a long trade. Um, let's see. We, yeah, we got a higher swing. Everything looks good. Now, when I say a higher swing, I mean a close above the prior swing high. Okay, this is a close above this swing high. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, 8.30 to 9.30, Paul. I know you can, I know we have the prayer call coming up here in about five minutes. So if you want to, if you want to jump off for that, then that's fine. Um, but we'll still be here. Okay. Um, the Russell is stuffed right inside the weekly trading zone, guys. It's not moving at all. Um, the ES is on its way to the weekly trading zone and it's not moving at all. Okay. Um, all right. On that gold trade, stop should be a break even. Okay. Stop should be a break even on that thing. I didn't get in at 0.5. I got in at 0.6. But my stop's at break even. Okay. Stop is at break even on that. And I'm out at break even again. Not a lot of follow through this one. Not a lot of follow through. Seven nine seven ten. That's two gold trades. And still nothing. Um I get in there. Okay. And out right there. I j I already went over that, Paul. Um, look at the brown line on I think almost every one of those trades that you took. It's just something that I noticed. Um, you know, everything else looked okay, but in the little pieces that you sent to me, I can't tell if you had higher swings or lower swings or anything like that. You know, in the little pictures. So if I had a little bit more, a um, little tiny bit more information, then I would have been able to probably help a little, a little better. Um, uh, Paul, let me just... Paul, I would say 
watch workshop number um, workshop number 117. I go into a lot of detail in that. Okay, I'm just let me just look in here. I didn't want that to be anything that would confuse anyone, and I really just kind of wanted to do it for partners. All right, most everyone in here right now is a partner. Most everyone, not everyone, but most people. Uh, um, okay, 117 workshop. 117 is. I go into a lot of detail. I think I actually even draw pictures. Yeah, there's two. There's two balls. I think there's actually more than two. Um, Paul E. is what is what I was talking to, not Paul T. Okay. Sorry for the confusion. <laughs> All right. So the ES is working its way up to the weekly trading zone. The Russell's stuffed inside its weekly trading zone. The crude oil is just going sideways. It's topped out. Okay, it's topped and bottomed. So this right here is the level that we need to close above on the crude oil, and this right here is the level we need to close below on the crude oil. You see, it's putting together uh, bearish divergence down here. But the green line and the brown line are both running at the same time. Typically, that means that it's going to change directions, right? Or it's going to run in the direction of those things. Um, didn't I say that on the gold a few minutes ago? Back here, when they started to run together, we bottomed out right here on gold. Okay. And now, oddly. Gold is it's messed up right here. There's nothing to trade right here, right at the moment. Okay, um, I am going to shut off the recording. I'm going to try to keep both of these computers going here. Okay, all right, Paul. No problem. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get you through that. Uh, so far this morning, I'm break even. I have three trades and I'm break even. Um, but we'll we'll get some something going here pretty soon. The markets have really been consolidating, so in my opinion, I'd rather be break even with three trades than you know down 20 ticks with five trades. Hey guys, just FYI, tomorrow morning, I'm not going to start at 8.30, because I have a meeting at 8.30. Alright, every Thursday morning, um, Dwayne and I have a meeting at 8.30. So, we won't be starting at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh-oh, my recording is still on. I thought it recording. Alright, over here on the gold, we have a trend line, we have a little bit of bullish divergence now. It's just a tiny bit of bullish divergence, but it is bullish divergence. And up close above the trend line would be a long trade on the gold at 1254.4. It's made a little bit of a commitment to the upside. Okay, it just closed up. 1254.4 um, right there is the spot. There's not a lot of room to run here, but it did make a commitment to the upside with this move right here. Okay, made a commitment to the upside with this move right here. Now, if this bar closes up, you're already going to be up above the MA1, so you have to be really fast with your risk. Okay. Um, yeah, the beans don't open up until 9.30. So, it's, yeah, they're going to be, they're going to be just sitting there for a while. Your bean chart probably looks just like mine, right? Um, probably doesn't have a whole lot on it right now. Right. All right, the crude oil just made a move up, too. Okay, so we should start seeing all these things start jumping around now. Um, crude got up above that level that we were looking at, and gold is, well, 
Gold's in the middle of a long trade right here. We want to see the green line turn up and work its way up into the cycle on the gold. That's what we're looking for on the gold. We're looking for that green line to turn up and work its way up into the cycle. Um, let's see, over here on the crude, we've gotten up above this level. It's now trending, so we can look for... There's our trend line. Here's our bullish divergence right here. Um, the gold would really surprise me if it ends up going down right here. It started to trend right here, and we had bullish divergence. Okay, um, on the crude and up close on this bar right here on the crude would be a long trade. 53 is the low, 57 is going to be the high. Okay, so if it goes up, it's going to be on that bar. All right, now we're going to take this wick into account and move our trend line over. Oops. Like that. All right, so you need an up close above this trend line and up close above that trend line. Um, yeah, 374 by 70 bid ask. That's what happens when there's no volume at all on it. That's 370 spread over 10. And, uh, uh, 374 spread over 10. And 70 spread over 10. Right? Probably. Alright, on the crude, I thought it was making a commitment to the upside, but it may not right here. You see how this brown line is headed straight down? Bang. That's not a good sign. Um, over here, there's some divergence between the green line and the brown line still, and the brown line is not headed straight down. So the gold has still got some uh, some chance over here. Okay, what we want to see is the green line turn up and head up into the brown line and into the cycle. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's nothing there on crude. You see how the brown... The black step line just got down below the BBC. That means we're no longer looking for trades on the long side. Okay, I'm sliding the crude off. Oops, because of that. Sliding the crude off to the side. Um, so we're still waiting here on the gold. We're waiting to see if uh, the green line is going to turn up. Going to, in fact, turn up and head up into the cycle. Um, and up close above the black step line right here would be a, a nice move in that direction and then up above the MA1 and then we should close up above the 1255 up here by the time the green line gets up into the cycle. All right. If it's going to go up, that's the way it should come together. Um, copper went right through the BBC, so there's no trade over here on the copper at the moment. The black line moved up above the BBC, so there's no trade over there on the copper at the moment. Uh, Bill down here, it's the maroon line, but brown is one syllable. Brown's easier to say. <coughs> if you have to say it a thousand times in two hours or three hours, it's easier to say. That's why, <laughs> you know, we we had originally for all these things we had really long names. Like the MA1 was the CFRN moving average number one or something like that. <laughs> Really long names, and then I said we we need to shorten those names. <laughs> we need to do something about them. All right, I'm surprised the gold isn't moving up either. Okay, the gold's not moving up either. They're both dropping down gold and the crude oil. So they both did a head fake there on the on the long side. The gold was a long trade right in there. Um, the crude never gave a setup on the long side. It's about to give one on the short side though. Okay. Alright, well, let's just wait and see what happens with that, okay? Um, beans, still sleeping. Alright, now on the crude, what we're building right here, this looks like a head to me. Alright. You see this really long, ugly shoulder? This is ahead. The neckline is down here. Oh, I put my mouse on the mouse pad. I actually got a mouse pad now, too. Alright, the neckline is down there. 
it's building the other shoulder right now. I hope it's not going to be a long, drawn-out, ugly shoulder like this one. But it is building the other shoulder right now. So we should look for shorting opportunities here to short this thing down into the shoulder, into the neckline. Okay. Um, this has got a high of 105.46. It's going to have a low of 105.42 right there. Okay, 105.42 is the low. Um, what I would anticipate here, I just shorted 105.42. Okay, 105.42. Um, what I would anticipate here is a move down toward the neckline. It may consolidate some and build a shoulder. It may drag it out some. But this is... Uh, this has got all the pieces, okay? Everything that we look for in a trade is in here. All right, we had the bearish cross, the pull away, the pull back and test, the down close, the bearish divergence with the red cycle. There's also divergence between the green line and the brown line. Um, and we just went from orange to black, with no transition bar. All right, stop at break even. Now, hopefully it's going to follow through and not take me out of break even, but it looks like it's probably going to. I'm still in it so far. But my stop is at break even. So I'm still in it so far. But my stop is at break even. Um, it looks like there's very limited follow through today. Could have something to do with this whole Bernanke thing that's going on this afternoon. Um, we may have to start taking some smaller chunks right here. Okay, because of the lack of follow through. I'm out at break even again. Um, let's see, I'm going to stop the recording. So in the, in the first hour today we took, six trades, and we ended with six ticks on gold. That's what it looks like. Ah, uh, copper. Copper's got a, uh, no, copper doesn't have a long trade. Copper didn't have any follow through either. Yeah, and there's one other there's one other significant thing over there on that right now, Pete. That was it was like super fast. It was you know fractions of a second. But one other thing that's showing over here that's glaring out at me right now is um we have a wick down here and no close below this level, so we didn't follow through. So there's no follow up trade right here. Okay. It is building this other shoulder. I think this wick is gonna is gonna mess this whole this whole pattern up. Okay. All right, guys. Now the regular market's just opened up. So time to start the regular recording. Okay. Um, man, I thought I had shut that thing off.